All right, today we're unboxing the Twist 40 by Hangar 9 ARF kit. A lot of good art on the box. So on the top here, we've got our build manual. We'll definitely be keeping that close by. Some decals. If you want to advertise for somebody, who knows? And then here on the top, it looks like we have a wing piece. So we'll go ahead and take that out. <clears throat> it's a one piece wing, not a two piece, but one piece. Set that aside on the floor here. And another layer of cardboard A tray. Looks like here we've got a canopy. It just looks like it's the canopy. The fuel tank and wheels and spinner. Oh, look, it even comes with some... Oh, look, the hoses are even already on the fuel tank. Huh, look at that. Landing gear struts. Push rods. There's clevises already on there. That's interesting too. Here are the control surfaces. There are two ailerons. A horizontal stabilizer. And it's two elevator pieces. Vertical stabilizer. And the uh, rudder, which also has the tailwheel installed. Look at that. There's a lot of uh, work that's been done here in the factory. And here is the fuse. Looks pretty good. Yeah. The ironing looks good. And, uh, so that's what's in the, uh, that's what's in the box for the Twist 40 by Hanger 9. Show you the cover again. All right, so here's my first step. As I uh, ran the wires for the servos, the ailerons, and the way I ran them was using this long wire. It's kind of semi-rigid. It's probably about a yard, a meter. And uh, I fed it through the top hole and traced it down to the servo opening. Put E-tape around the servo connector and then pulled it up through the hole. Uh, doing this, you have to label the cables as they come out the top, left and right. Uh, but the, the push rods seem to do the trick. It's not too long, not too short. Um, I haven't screwed the servos in yet. I'm waiting for my drill to charge. But now I uh, have the control surfaces and we'll be putting the hinges on the control surfaces. Uh, the way I'm doing this is the standard way for nylon hinges. You uh, take a T-pin and put the pin 
through basically the center of the hinge uh, all to one side and that way you're guaranteed to have that gap as you install the hinge uh, stay tuned okay so installing the hinges you've got the t-pin and about the center you found the cut to put the hinge into I'm gonna make sure that it sits down so that the pin is resting against the control surface. Once you get that on, it's very important that you line the surface up with the other cuts and adjust the hinges as necessary so that when you go to install them, they will all fit in. Like this one, I've got to slide over a little bit to match the cut. This one has to come in a little bit to match the cut. And this one out here looks like it's about good. That's part of the dry fit process before you do any gluing. <clears throat> and it's important to only glue one side at a time. Don't try to glue the hinge to the wing and the surface. You want to glue all of the parts to the surface first and then after that glue is dried you can insert all the hinges at once and then glue them accordingly. You will want to do after you've glued your hinges into place is to take the hinge and give it a good snug tug. Make sure that the hinge doesn't come out on you. Make sure that it's nice and seated in there. And it's not gonna come out if you apply some pressure. And that's how you, uh, that's how you glue one side of the hinge. Now, the next step that we're gonna do is we're going to take this area right here, which is where the control horn will live, where the wood is, and we're going to go ahead and mark out where the control horn should be screwed in. That's next. Is the fuel tank, and inside the fuel tank is what's called the clunker. Uh, I personally like to hear it rattle on all four sides of the fuel tank. That way I'm sure that it's at the bottom, no matter what orientation the aircraft is in. But one thing I noticed is that inverted, this does not want to go to the bottom, if you can see it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open it up. I'm going to remove the tubing that they put on there. I mean, they tried, they did their best. But A, it's not necessarily aircraft grade silicone. B, it's a little too rigid to allow the clunker to clunk in an inverted position. You can hear it when it's level. Inverted, it doesn't really want to go more than halfway. So we're going to swap those uh, fuel lines out. So just so you can see the process here, I removed the, uh, the lines from these nipples and you unscrew this uh, screw here, which compresses this rubber stopper. As you tighten it, it squeezes it, making the rubber fatter and sealing the, uh, sealing the tank. So I had to unscrew that and then pop the uh, assembly out of the tank here. And as you can tell, it's not a, it's not the most beautiful piece of work that they've ever done, but they tried. So we'll go ahead and replace it with uh, some softer, more flexible super blue uh, and make the fuel line out of that. Okay, so this is with the new softer silicone tube on the bottom, the clunks, inverted clunks. On the sides, it clunks. 
I just want to make sure that you can hear that sound. That that, that, that sound means the, the clunker is doing what it's supposed to do and weighing the hose down. No matter which way the uh, aircraft is oriented. I wanted to give an example of a, a larger tank and how much of a difference that extra little bit of tubing in there makes. This one clunks all the way around, no matter what, just because there's a little extra length of hose in there. So that you can see what I'm doing here is I am using a 1 16th drill bit. Pilot the holes. I'm only going to do one to start on each servo. I'll put the screw in, and then after that starter screw is in, I'll go around, pilot the rest of the holes, and then install the rest of the screws. All right, so now we have the servo installed with the uh, servo arm. I'm using the extended, uh, the, the JR super strong long arms. Uh, the longer the arm, the more authority you have, obviously. Uh, but what I'm doing here is I'm lining up this, this measuring uh, stick with the outside of the control arm, the, the farthest hole. And I've got it lined up down here onto my surface, which by the way, my surface is not glued in. You can still see the T-pins around here. Um, I'm just using the surface here to, to mark the area that we're gonna drill on, which as long as I'm not lifting up on it. Should be right around here is what we're looking at for the uh, for the control horn. Because you want the control horn to be lined up directly with that arm. You don't want any you don't want any difference. It's gotta be straight in front of it. And also you want the, uh, the clevis holes to be over the open end of the hinge. So where the gap is, that's exactly where you want these holes. You don't want them in front, you don't want them behind, you want them right over top there. Here we are about to mark the other side and I've got the stick lined up just with that hole over it. And uh, we'll go ahead and and uh, mark this. And any of the Sharpie can come off with isopropyl alcohol, rubbing alcohol. Uh, we'll clean any of this marker up. But one thing I forgot to mention is during this period where you're, you're dry fitting, because we haven't glued these in, uh, it can be a little tricky to get the dry fit done. Um, but you're going to do it twice anyway, because we're going to take out the uh, control surface now. And now we're going to mount the control horn. You don't want to do this after you've installed the hinges, because then what you're doing is you're putting a lot of pressure on the hinges that they don't normally get. Uh, and you really want to, especially being the nylon hinges, you really want to save them as much as possible during the build process. Uh, one thing that I normally do is I'll use this Dubro uh, plastic hinge with a, with a proper pin in it. But unfortunately, the uh, width of this material is so narrow like you, you can tell the nylon hinge, it's, it's the width of a piece of paper and it's, <laughs> it's easily 20%, 30% of the material. Um, so that's why I opted to just go with the nylon hinges. 
Otherwise, on a bigger scale model, I would use the, uh, the plastic hinge just because it's, it's a lot more stout and uh, won't come off during flight. So, future reference. All right, so we can tell what's going on here. I have the control horn uh, in its approximate position. See how it's extending just a little bit past the edge of the surface? That's so that the uh, clevis holes will be over the gap of the, uh, the hinge, the bevel. And I've used T-pins to mark its holes. And over here, I've got the uh, appropriate tiny hardware. And you want to just make sure that as you're getting this hardware together, that it all goes through these holes. Sometimes these holes on this material aren't cut quite big enough, but it seems like these are all big enough for the hardware. So now what I'll do is I'll take my uh, 16th inch bit and I will go through the holes that I've marked with the T-pins. I'll take all this stuff out. And use that as the, uh, as the guide. So at the end of the day, you should be able to have the three pieces of hardware in there. The uh, clevis arm. Let's see, let's make sure it still, yep, still sticks out past the edge a little bit. It's a little cockeyed, but that's just because of the way the, uh, the way the surface mounts to the wing. Um, then you can just put these little, tiny little nuts onto the top. And, uh, what I'll typically do is... After I get them screwed down, I will uh, add a little bit of CA, a drop of CA on the top, and then I will, actually I will snip it first. So I'll snip the extra, the extra bolt part with my uh, diagonal cutters here. And then once it's just a little stub, that's when I'll apply a drop of thick CA just, just to keep it from moving around. Uh, of course, you have to torque it from the other side too with your screwdriver. That's a control horn. Just so that you can see here, I have snipped the extra pieces of thread off. And after snipping them, I'm gonna go ahead and put a drop here, drop there, and drop there and that just double makes sure as my friend would say that those nuts aren't going anywhere and here's the other wing it should be dry already with its control horn mounted in the proper direction and space and all that stuff for the servo because you don't want there to be any interference between the servo and the surface you want that to be as frictionless as possible. Keyword, frictionless. All right, so now we are installing the ailerons by lining up the hinges with the cuts that are already in the wing, making sure that they seat all four of them. This takes a little bit of a uh, finesse here because you want to make sure that the wing is even on this side with the surface not too far out and want to make sure there's a clearance on the other side as well because that side is going to be on the fuselage essentially so now we've got it pushed in all the way up to our pins what we're going to do is we're going to take some of this here, some super thin CA, super thin glue, and we're going to apply it to the hinge on the wing side. We've already done the aileron side, so now we're just going to apply glue 
to the wing side here. Just, just a drop ought to do it. Just a little bit. Just enough to get soaked up in there. We're going to let this side soak for a minute. Just for a few seconds. You don't want any to drip. If you have any drip, wipe it away immediately. Be sure to have paper towels or Q-tips there to dry it. Now we'll do this side. You want to do both sides of the aileron. You want to do both sides of any surface you're doing, really. So we'll put a drop up there on each side, drop here on each side. Oops, we got a drip. Sometimes you just can't go fast enough. And let me wipe these drips up with a Q-tip as quickly as I can. You don't want it to go all the way down. It's, it's kind of a pain in the butt to get off. But that's essentially how fast you glue it. And the glue only takes about, let's see here, one to three seconds, it says. One to three seconds to dry. You want to make sure there's still flex, plenty of flex in the wing. And in just a few seconds, we'll do a tug test. Now, I've already done this wing, or this, this aileron, so we can do a tug test on it. I'm just going to bounce the wing up and down by the control surface. Make sure that it's not going to pop out when I apply force to it. We'll do the same thing on this side. In just a few seconds, we'll let it dry for a little more. And then we'll give it a tug test. Tug tests are very important. So, so far so good. I'd say it passes. It's still in the early phases of drying, but I'd say it passes. And to take the pins out, you twist them and then you pull. You always want to twist before you pull so that you're leaving the hinge as intact as possible. I've had these hinges fail on me before in flight and you don't want a dangling aileron because your hinge failed. We can pull all these. The gap is sufficient. The control horns are lined up. I'll show you that in just a second. So if you look at the control horns relative to the servo, they're in line. And that's how you do a control surface, just like that.